This video is going to be a follow-up to the one I just made about my cyclocross race weekend, which was my first cyclocross race in over two years. It was also the first time I used a gravel bike in a cyclocross race. So the one that I just posted before this one was the Saturday race. The Sunday race, which is the one I'll talk about in this video, happened to be the Florida State Championship cyclocross race. So I entered the Masters 45 plus category. Now, the reason I'm making this video is to hopefully encourage some of you out there to do a cyclocross race. They are so much fun. I used to hear about cross racing when I was really in the mountain bike cross country racing and I was like, yeah, whatever. But after getting into it several years ago, it has become my favorite form of bike racing. Gravel, cross country, mountain biking. Cyclocross is my favorite for a few reasons. And I won't go into a whole bunch of them because I made a video many years ago about what I love about cyclocross racing, which I'll link at the end of this video. But to sum up, it's, it's a short form of racing and you're riding a bike with skinny tires off-road, through mud, through sand, hopping over barriers. It's like you're underbiked, and that's what makes it fun. And you're racing against other people that are underbiked on an off-road course. I love it. So I'll talk about the Sunday race, how it unfolded. As I mentioned in the previous video, it was literally the most exciting cyclocross race I had ever been in because of the way the race drama unfolded. So as I mentioned, I was in the Masters 45 plus class. They started the 35 plus about 10 or 15 seconds in front of us, and then they started us. And I'm going to use the names of two of my friends that were in the race that we ride together uh, throughout the year. Uh, they're local, and uh, my uh, but I'm going to use their first initial because I didn't get really their permission to mention their name in the video, so I want to be respectful of that. So uh, my buddy B takes off, and he takes off so fast, and I'm like, he's got it, like right from the start i'm like well i'm gonna i'm gonna fight for second and he kind of gets mixed in with the 35 plus riders that aren't going as fast as the lead riders and he's weaving his way through and just pinning it i'm like man he is flying so i start to do the same thing i'm weaving my way through some other riders and then i finally see him up ahead my buddy g is behind me and he actually finished behind me the day before he crashed the first lap and i beat him by a pretty decent margin I didn't really think he was going to be in the running. He ended up riding the race of his life. So my buddy B is in front and there's a single track portion and I can kind of see him up ahead in the single track portion, which started a couple minutes into the lap. And so I, I, I'm pinning it and I finally catch up to him. And so we are riding several laps together. I'm kind of sitting on his wheel. I came around at one point and then he came around me. We switched back and forth. Meanwhile, our buddy G behind us is slowly catching up. In fact, we slowed down a little bit because, you know, after you start switching places, you're kind of playing that count and mouse and, you know, letting someone else take the lead. Well, meantime, G's picking it up. Finally, he catches up. And so it's the three of us. And we did lap after lap, swapping places. There were some sections where, you know, I would hit a soft section and maybe didn't pick the right line. I'd, I'd, I'd lose a gap. And then the same thing would happen to one of them. But we just went back and forth. And more and more people are starting to watch the race because it was the closest race of the day. So going into the last lap. To watch. One, two, three, and 45 plus. Get one, it, to go, get it. one to go. Yeah. I'm in. I think I'm in second position and my buddy G comes on the inside and bumps elbows just to let me know he was there. I didn't really know he was coming around and out of respect, which is what you do when you're racing, you kind of give a little elbow to let them know that they're there. And when he bumps elbows, I'm like, man, it is on. This is cyclocross racing at its best, you know, bumping elbows, neck and neck. And so G is trying to get ahead because he actually wasn't quite as fast in the single track. So my other buddy and I, are more mountain bikers and we ride a lot of single track and G is not quite the mountain biker, um, but he's a super strong rider. He does a lot of gravel, he even does a lot of Zwift racing. So he's super fit, super strong. And so he's trying to get ahead to lead going into the single track and he gets in first place. So he's trying to block so that we don't pull ahead in the single track. And so again, it's the last lap and right before the single track, B tries to get ahead 
and G just picks it up and doesn't let him go into the single track first. Well, once we get into the single track, I'm in third spot. And B finally finds a line, gets around G. So I'm still in third spot. I'm like, G, buddy, I got to get around. I can't let him get ahead in the single track. So he lets me around, which I think he kind of regretted later, but he lets me around. And so, you know, I'm in second and we're still just neck and neck through, through the final lap. Finally, I'm, I work my way. I think, I think B came around me, so I'm in third. And all throughout the race, I'm finding places that I can pass. And that's what you do when you're racing, especially like a cyclocross race, when you're doing lap after lap. And, you know, some sections you're like, there's no way I can pass in this one because this section just took the life out of me. But there's other sections where, all right, I feel good. I could pass here and it's clear. So I found a few spots. And so I get my way around B and sounds funny just to use the first initial, but I get my way around and I'm in second position coming up to this gate. And I had planned to come around after the gate and try to get around G. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it now because he's probably not going to expect it. So I get around him, immediately make a right-hand turn in, around the gate. And then it's a long straightaway, another left long straightaway in the finish. So as soon as I get around him, it is all out. We're like a minute from the finish line. I am pinning it with everything that I had. And I came around the last one, again, long straightaway, uh, just sprinting as hard as I can go. It ended up being probably like a minute long sprint. And I, I, don't, I didn't have a heart rate monitor on, but I would imagine my heart rate was like close to 200. It was one of the hardest pushes I've ever done. Ended up holding the, the, the first place all the way across the finish line. Get it, Dad! Making a move. Let's go! So the reason that I wanted to say that is not to really talk about my win, but to talk about how exciting even amateur cyclocross racing is. And that's the beauty about bike racing. It doesn't matter if you're racing pro or if you're racing a smaller amateur race. It's kind of the same feel. It's the same level of pain. It's the same strategy. And that's what I loved about this race is there was a lot of strategy. You know, like my buddy G trying to block going into the single track trying to find places to pass, finding where you're strong. Uh, there was just a lot th that you're thinking about during the race. And again, it doesn't matter if you're pro, if you're amateur, you can enjoy racing. And so, like I said, if you've never done a cyclocross race, give it a shot. If you have a local race and all you have is a mountain bike, do it on a mountain bike. And that's what my son did. My son actually raced the state championship race that day in category four or five, and he won his race. Uh, so it's kind of fun, father and son racing together, both winning. Uh, the state championship so that was a pretty special moment as a dad but if you have all you have is a mountain bike doing a mountain bike if you have a gravel bike gravel bike does great as a cyclocross race bike and so just try it and i have a feeling if you do you'll probably thank me so like i said i'll talk about real quick how the gravel bike did as a cyclocross race bike so back when i first started racing cross I, the first one i ever did was on a mountain bike and then i immediately got a cross race bike Using the gravel bike actually did really well, probably a little bit better than I thought it would. It's true that the gravel bike doesn't accelerate quite as fast. It's not as nimble, especially in the tight corners. And so it, it's not the ideal cross race bike, but unless you're racing at a pretty competitive level, a gravel bike is gonna do just fine. I was actually surprised, and it's gonna be comfortable, right? It's probably a little bit more comfortable than a cyclocross bike because those are less forgiving. Uh, in favor of being more agile and uh, accelerate better. So the, the gravel bike, no, I had no problems at all doing it uh, as a, on a cyclocross race as a race bike. So anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up for me and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.